My life in China growing up was extreme hardship and poverty. Um, I was the sixth of seven peasant sons born into rural China under Mao. And we were really fighting for our food, for our survival, and very limited freedom. All we got was really our parents' love and the belief, faith in us, and wanted to, us to become decent human beings. How I was selected to go to the Beijing Dance Academy to study ballet was truly a miracle. It was just one point in life, a magical spark happened and transformed my entire life beyond recognition. Um, you know, it was just one of these ordinary days. I went to school, it was snowing outside, and uh, suddenly in the middle of reading We Love You, Chairman Mao text, um, people from the Beijing Dance Academy were led into our classroom and they were selecting talents to study ballet. They asked all to, st to stand up to sing We Love You Chairman Mao songs. As we were singing, these four people from Beijing walk along the aisles and try to get some vague idea of our physical body shape. They passed me, passed me right by without taking any notice. Our teacher tap on the shoulder of the very last man from Beijing, just as he, he was about to walk out of the room. She said, she pointed me, she said, what about that one? And that one was me. The audition process was absolutely brutal. They measured every inch of, of our bodies, and they tested your flexibility to no end. And there were quite, I'm, I'm convinced, quite a few uh, bodies, young bodies were broken and because they nearly broke mine by forcing my legs higher up in the air. One person really pushed me against the wall. One person held one knee straight. The second person pushed both my shoulders firmly against the wall. And the third person forced the other leg high in the air. So along the way, they torn both my hamstrings. Um, but you can't scream. If you did, you were instantly disqualified. It took me a long time to actually enjoy ballet, to actually like ballet, eventually love ballet. I absolutely hated it. If you imagine ballet, I would just want to gag. Uh, then um, one day, this one amazing teacher walked into my life. He really changed my entire view on this beautiful art form and how beautiful, how graceful, how elegant uh, this art form can be. I did work hard uh, to become good. I worked long hours when I went there. It was from 5.30 in the morning to 9 o'clock at night, six days a week we trained. But once I fell, fell in love with ballet, I knew I got a lot of catch up to do if I want to uh, really become the best. So I got myself up very early in the morning and then I strapped heavy sandbags on both my ankles, hopped one leg up and down and up and down on four levels of stairs. And uh, I did that for years to train the muscle strength to allow me to leap high if I got rid of these sandbags. But I, what worse was I couldn't turn. And as a dancer, if you can't jump, if you can't turn, you've got a hopeless career. And uh, the reason I can't turn was because I had experienced this most horrific motion sickness as a child. And so imagining ballerinas turning, turning, spinning, spinning, kept on spinning. So I just felt terribly sick before I even started it. I often just threw up in the middle of practice. Um, but eventually I conquered it by turning under the candlelight at nighttime, practice and practice spotting. And uh, I felt if I could turn well with this, this little faint candlelight in front of me, then eventually I could turn brilliantly with lights on the stage and uh, during the day. So eventually I did, I conquered my motion sickness. I became one of probably the best turner uh, in the history of the graduates of the Beijing Dance Academy, and it became a high lever. Um, so I you know, really proved to myself more than anyone that if you're willing to work hard, if you're determined, if you have vision in your mind, and you're relentlessly working towards it, nothing's impossible. Uh, the first trip to the U.S. was absolutely a shocking experience. Culturally, everything about the American society was so foreign. It was it really um, was a bit scary because the two worlds could not be any different under the communist, um, you know, upbringing 
and the free for all Western society. The main uh, reason I stayed in America was really I fell in love. I fell in love for the first time to this young, beautiful girl, and uh, and you know, one can only imagine just how strong the first love is. And uh, and she was the reason I was willing to almost sacrifice my life, and I nearly lost my life over it by wanting to do that. Now, at the time in 1979, 80 was really China was virtually only started to open up. And the officials being sent out of China, they were still very much trapped in that political, Mao's political ideology, even though under Deng Xiaoping, China had opened up. So they really took the matter into their own, their own hands with my, my marriage to Elizabeth. And, uh, um, and it caused, caused this incredible political scandal at the time when they held me against my will at the Chinese consulate in Houston for over 21 hours. And it was during that time I truly, truly felt scared for the first time in my life, scared of losing my life that night. Uh, the first time my parents saw me dance uh, was a magical moment in my life because of the help of George and Barbara Bush and then the Chinese government eventually granted my parents the permission to leave China to visit me. Uh, it was a dream come true for us. They have never seen me dance before. They were going to see me dance that first night they arrived. And, uh, but there was a little hiccup. Their plane was terribly delayed. And um, when my director, Ben Stevens, realized they were going to miss at least the first half of that performance, he decided to wait for them. So he, he delayed the performance. During the waiting period, uh, the, some of the audience members got hold of the news of my parents' arrival. And when they finally walked into the theater, the whole audience started to applaud for them. And my poor parents, they, didn't, they really didn't know um, what they were walking into. It was obviously highly emotionally charged. And I was informed of their arrival just virtually just before the curtain went up. And they lied to me. They said that they were waiting for some VIPs to arrive but it's actually the VIPs were my parents. So it was, it was incredible. It was, uh, um, and I probably have danced the performance of my life for them.